So Markov decision processes are a very general framework that can be used to model lots of problems, such as uh, shortest path problems, optimal stopping problems, reinforcement learning problems, experiment design problems, and advertising. And there are many applications of Markov decision processes, specifically robotics, economics, control, and resource allocation. Now, for experiment design specifically, it makes sense to talk about bandit problems initially. So what is bandit problems? Well, imagine you go to a casino and you want to maximize the amount of money you make during the night. Uh, to do that, you would basically need to know which one of these machines is giving you the most money on average. However, you don't know that beforehand. If you do, then you just go and play that machine. If you don't, then you have to spend some time playing different machines until you're pretty sure which one is the best, and then you can try and switch to that one. But of course, you can always make a mistake and just by chance end up playing a machine which is less than optimal. This is called the exploration exploitation problem, and it can be also be visualized. When you think about the problem of optimizing a function which is not observed, let's say you want to find the maximum of this function. So typically this is a simple problem relatively if you can observe or evaluate the function. So the maximum is there. But if you cannot, then it's a bit trickier. Let's say that you can only select some point x and then instead of observing the value of the function, you need to observe a noisy measurement that on average is equal to the value of the function. That means that when you select a point here, then you might get the observation there. You select the point there, then you might get a higher observation, and so on. That makes estimating the function part of the problem. So you have to simultaneously estimate what this function looks like and find what is maximizing it. Okay. Uh, so by exploring the function more and more, you're exploring, uh, you're trying to estimate it better and better. But of course, at some point, you might need to say, well, I will stop estimating and just try and maximize the function at the point where it seems to be maximal. Okay. However, it's not so simple as that. Um, in online advertising, this is a clear type of value problem where you are, have customers coming to your website and you decide what a person to show to them. And the basic amount of revenue you make from the advertising is your the thing you want to maximize. However, since you don't know beforehand how customers will respond to the advertisements, it's a kind of uh, a non optimization problem, like uh, the previous one. A classical example of valid problems is clinical trials, where you might have many different drugs, and you need to test each one of the drugs. What you normally do is that you randomly select people and you give them drug A or drug B. This is okay. But sometimes you want to be more efficient, especially if you have many, many different drugs to test. Okay? Then you'd like maybe to try and focus on the drugs that look most promising. Hmm? This is already done in, in practice because, for example, when something bad happens in the trial, the trial stops. Hmm? So it's not like we assign drugs to people and then we just wait and see what happens. No, sometimes we stop the trial when something really bad happens. And you can think about extending it to the case where you would like to adapt the trial so that as you get more and more data, you change the ratio with which you assign different drugs to favor the ones that look most promising. But you still don't want to stop assigning the drugs that are less promising. That's because they might uh, actually be quite good. And you might have a statistical fluke in your original results. So you would like to keep testing all the drugs as much as you can until you're pretty sure that you have the best drug. So this kind of thing can be automated, and there has been a lot of work at the University of Manchester with robot scientists, which basically take uh, different compounds and they do various tests with them to try to find the most effective drugs for different diseases. Yeah. This is again based on the idea of experiment design. So to be more specific, the stochastic and armed bandit problem can be formalized as false. We have a set of actions A, let's say N actions, and each one of these actions gives you a random reward. And the distribution of that reward is fixed given the action. And it's this one. Every arm also has an expected reward 
that is fixed because the division is fixed and we call this one row i. Now at time t we choose an action at and then we observe a random reward rt drawn from the ith arm right here. And then what we want to do is maximize the sum of rewards obtained over time. This is our utility. Now the problem is that we don't really know this values row. Mm -hmm. So we cannot maximize this directly. And this is uh, the main difficulty of this problem. And um, the other problem, of course, we encounter in practice is that whenever we select one arm, we don't actually see the rewards of the other arms. So that means that to estimate their rewards, their expected rewards, we need to also play them. So what is a policy? A policy is generally an algorithm for taking actions, given the observed history. Yeah. So let's say the history is a sequence of rewards and actions until now, then the next action will depend on the complete history of observations if you have a particular policy. Now the question is, why should our action depend on the complete history? Yeah. Is it because the next reward depends on all the actions you have taken? Is it because we don't know which arm gives the highest reward? Is it because the next reward depends on all the previous rewards? Or is it because the next reward depends on the complete history? Now we'll see later that um, in terms of the actual problem, it is that this thing is the important part. We don't know which arm gives the highest reward. Yeah. This is definitely not true directly, and this one is also not true directly. However, if we think about what we know about the problem, our knowledge of the problem, in that sense, the next reward that we expect to get will depend on the complete history, which is different from the actual reward. So let's talk about a very simple example. Let's talk about the expected utility of a uniform random policy, taking the same act, uh, every action with the same problem. There, the expected utility of a policy is basically the expected sum of rewards over time. We can move the expectation inside, and we know that we take a reaction probably to 1 over n, and rho i is the expected reward of the ir. So that means that our total reward is t over n, t over the average reward over all the arms. Yeah. Of course, that means that we're not doing as well as we could, so as the maximum we can get here is basically, uh, what is the maximum? Well, if you look at all possible policies, then the maximum we can get is max pi yeah, is going to be now the move is there, okay, in this particular case. And this is basically t times rho star, where rho star is greater or equal to rho i. Okay, is the one that's maximizing everything. So we know we're losing quite a lot if we do that because we could be getting rho star over all time, but we're getting instead the average reward of all the hours. If you have a general policy, you can still calculate its uh, expected utility. It's not very difficult. Uh, just like uh, the same thing as before. Now, the difference is that if you look at general policies, like policies that learn from the data, then these policies will select actions depending on the public history. Now, to calculate the utility, we need to calculate the probability of obtaining a specific history. Yeah? And this is kind of the problem with these uh, valid problems. If you want to think about the effect of adaptive policies, then you have to think about how these policies will develop in the future. So before we do this complicated uh, idea, let's talk about simple heuristics for the annual reward case. Let's say you have a running average of the reward obtained by each arm. So at hat theta is the average reward you obtained, as n is the number of times you played arm i, and r is the total reward you get from this arm. So whenever you play this arm, you increase the reward that you have stored for the arm by the reward you get, and you increase the number of times you have played the arm by one. 
Then you can select the policy that selects the arm but maximizes this estimated reward at the next step. Yeah. Now the interesting thing about this policy is that the quality of the policy depends quite a bit on what is your initial value for this n and r. Mm -hmm. So if you see in the, in the lab, you will see that uh, this makes quite a big difference. In particular, if you select an n and an r that are small, then you might get stuck playing a suboptimal r. While if you select big values, you will find that you spend more time playing all the arms so you're losing because you're playing too many suboptimal arms. Later we see that there's a different approach you can use that kind of optimally uh, selects an, an estimate of this average, which gives you good guarantees of performance. But if you try and do it like this, then you either two small values or two high values in general. So next we'll talk about a specific example using Bernoulli values.